UIM F1H2O World Powerboat Championship returned to Sharjah in the United Arab Emirates for the final Grand Prix of the season where the 2017 World Championship was decided. Sharjah has been the traditional final stop of the UIM F1H2O Tour for years and it has seen some of the most dramatic races in the history of the sport. Sharjah is the third largest sheikhdom of the UAE and it has a character all its own, less glamorous and glitzy compared to its more illustrious neighbors, but one that is firmly rooted in its culture, history and Arab Islamic roots, with architecture spanning many geographies, periods and styles, making it a region-wide center for Arab Islamic culture. Sharjah also stands out as a modern, vibrant and cosmopolitan city, one that is progressing in a balanced yet firm direction toward the future without compromising all that makes it such a unique place. Sharjah also boasts natural splendors with long sandy beaches and a very strong connection to the nearby desert which continues to hold a very special place in the Sharjah mentality. Sharjah has hosted the UIM F1H2O Grand Prix for three decades, and this year's Grand Prix of Sharjah will once again be the final and deciding round of the 2017 season. Locals turned out in their thousands to meet the drivers and teams, and also taste the rare chance to experience the thrill of an F1H2O boat firsthand in the two-seater. Now let's see what happened in the last round in Abu Dhabi. Alex Carella led the World Championship standings going into the penultimate Grand Prix of the year, but it was his biggest World Championship rival, three-time defending World Champion Philip Schiap, who took the all-important BRM pole position in qualifying and led the race from the start, with Carella starting third on the pontoon behind Moritz Stromoy. A massive crash between Sammy Celio and Cedric Deguin led to a restart, but Schiap held firm in the lead, while Carella pursued Moritz Stromoy all race long, trying to get past the Norwegian, knowing that a win for him in Abu Dhabi would seal the world title then and there. But Stromoy held off the Corella challenge to finish runner-up behind Schiap, who was the start-to-finish winner, earning a crucial 20 points. Despite coming third, those 12 points for Corella meant he would be going into the Grand Prix of Sharjah with a very comfortable 11-point lead. It would be a two-horse race, Corella versus Schiap for the 2017 title. In the team championship standings, Team Abu Dhabi continued their dominance going into the last round. Lagoon is a place where champions have been made and crowned, and the Grand Prix of Sharjah has always been the scene of high drama. This year is no exception. It's all down to two men, Alex Corella of Team Abu Dhabi versus Philip Schiap of CTICF1 Shenzhen, China. The two of them have won the last six world championships, Corella the first three, Schiap the last three. They do battle in Sharjah for their fourth career world titles, but Corella goes in the favorite with an 11 point lead over Shiap. Corella just needs to finish in the top 10 to claim the title in Sharjah. His teammate, Tani Al Kamzi, is a three time former champion on Khalid Lagoon, and he can be expected to make an impact in the race too for Team Abu Dhabi, who are clear favorites for the World Team Championship title in 2017. Philip Schiap of CTICF1 Shenzhen China team wants to be just the second driver in history to win four world titles in a row, but he knows the odds are stacked against him. He needs to win. Oh. 
and Corella needs to not be able to get any points for the Frenchman to take the 2017 title, a tall order, no doubt. Despite no longer being in the running for the world title, Eric Stark of Team Sweden is 19 points up on Sammy Celio in the world standings, meaning he's in a very good position to at least finish the season on his first year-end podium. The championship in one thing, but of course I'm going to win the race. Like that's, that's our main goal for every race. So yeah, I will definitely make a statement and show everyone who I am. Although it's a two-man race for the world title in Sharjah, there are numerous drivers who could all have an impact here, with many former Grand Prix of Sharjah champions amongst them, including both victory drivers Sean Torrente and Ahmed Al Hamili, and also the 2015 champion Moritz Stromoy. The Grand Prix of Sharjah course on Khaled Lagoon is notoriously technical, with sticky water conditions, sharp angles and tight turns, including a tricky right-hander. I love this race course. I love that it's in the middle of the city. Um, it's so cool when you're out on the boat and you get the sun through the buildings and the, and the wind coming through the buildings. It's really, really neat, really fun. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. I've always run good here and we tested a lot this week, so I feel really good about the day. First and most important step for any potential champion here is of course the BRM qualifying and pole position is key to winning the race here. Yes, it's a um, nice track, it's a driver track for sure, it's very technical and uh, I like these uh, tracks and I hope I do my best for get the pole. The qualifying is divided into three sessions, the field reduced to 12 boats after Q1 and then to just six boats at the end of Q2. Those final six boats duel it out in Q3 to determine the final starting grid lineup and pole position for the race. In Q1, place performance's 13-time Grand Prix champion Francesco Cantando was off the pace in what had been a miserable season for the Italian veteran, but his teammate Bartek Marsalek of Poland ran lap after lap, securing a place in Q2. F1 Atlantic teammates Duarte Benevente of Portugal and Grant Trask of Australia were unable to find the speed to make it into Q2. Cedric de Guin of Maverick F1 Racing Team just misses out, as does Team Sweden's third and newest driver, Eric Eden, a former F2 driver and F1 H2O newcomer. There was a tough battle for the 12th and final spot in Q2, as Emirates Racing Team's Moritz Stromoy pushed hard and just managed to squeeze in ahead of Tani Alkamzi. The bad fortune continued for Sammy Celio, who missed out on a Q2 place, finishing 13th. Alex Carella tops Q1 with the fastest lap time, Marshalek with a great result in second, and Torrente third fastest. Maverick F1 driver Beranger Robert and Emirates Racing Team's Matthew Palfreyman were unable to get any laps on the water. Q2, it's now make or break as 12 votes buy for six Q3 spots as the competition moves up a notch in the quest for pole. Alex Carella and Bartek Marshalek continued their fine Q1 form into Q2, playing the fastest lap times. But Carella's team Abu Dhabi teammates Thani and Rashid Al Kamzi were not finding the speed and rhythm they needed out there. Victory's Sean Torrente was also having a rough time of it, and he was unable to make it in the top six. Push as he might, Philip Schiap was unable to break the 46 second barrier, while his teammate Peter Morin was out in 10th, chasing the 47 second barrier. Stromoy was again fighting at the threshold of the next session, trying to just squeeze through to Q3, but she was outdone this time by Ahmed Al Hamili, right in the final stages. Philip Roms of Mad Croc Baba Racing also exited in Q2. It was all down to the fastest six boats now in Q3. Victories Al Hamili was first out, cracking the 46 second barrier with a good tight 45.87. Team Sweden's Jonas Anderson was out next, but it was a lackluster 46.15 from him. Philip Schiaff was next. He knew just how crucial pole position was if he was to find a way to pull off a win in Sharjah. He went for it, but he was unable to find the speed he needed, settling for a disappointing 46.13. The Frenchman's task just got a lot harder. Next up was Eric Stark of Team Sweden. He was in exceptional form. Eric Stark lays down a brilliant lap to snatch provisional pole with a time to beat of 45.27. <laughs> Oh. 
Bartek Marshalek went out looking to continue his excellent run of form in the BRM qualifying. In his first of two laps, there's a problem. It's no good. He goes for his second lap, and this time it's smooth, fast, and tight. 45.75, very good time. He's unable to beat Stark, but he's just behind the Swede with one man left. Alex Carrella has his fate in his own hands now. He's been the fastest in both Q1 and Q2, but this is where it really counts. Can he do it? This is it, the last qualifying lap of the year. Will it be the one that leads to a world title? He is fast, focused, and in control. That is some incredible driving from the three-time world champion. It's good, it's very good. It's the pole position for Corella, 45.01. What a time. He just got a lot closer to a fourth world title. I give everything, I know that. Uh, pole was crucial here, and uh, what to say, more than this, uh, I haven't today. It's a special day, and for sure one of my best pole position ever since I'm racing Formula One. Incredible best ever result in qualifying for Bartek Marsalek as he starts in third behind Alex Carella and Eric Stark. Ahmed Al Hamali fourth. Shiap will need to claw his way back up from fifth. Jonas Anderson rounds out the top six. Race day started off with high drama in the morning official practice where victory driver Sean Torrente crashed his boat. An unfortunate turn for the American, and his crew would have to hustle to get the boat ready or opt for the spare more boat. Torrente would be starting at the back. The rest of the field was ready and raring to go come race time. Teams and crews completing last minute preparations for the battle ahead. It was a fantastic day yesterday, big pleasure and finally I get it. So for sure today I want to save the spot. I'm absolutely ready for a fight. Chiap is the only man who could potentially derail the Corella juggernaut, but the odds are stacked against him. Yes, for sure, it's not a good result on the qualifying yesterday. But now it's a night challenge, and uh, we, we won't uh, make an incredible result, but for sure I do my best and I push for my team. The pressure is on Alex Carella. He faltered here last year, losing the world title to Shiap, so he wants to avoid any nasty surprises this year. Carella in prime position on pole. Next to him is Stark. In third is Marshalek in his best ever starting grid position. Al Hamali fourth, then Shiap and Anderson Stromoy seventh, Former Sharjah champion Daniel Kamzi down in 11th. Torrente starts at the back in 16th. Behind him, newcomer Eric Eden, Grant Trask in 18th, and Duarte Benavente starting back in 21st. The drivers and officials give the traditional parade lap salute to the gathered spectators as the countdown to the final Grand Prix of the year begins. There they go, the race is on. Great start from Ahmed Al Hamali in fourth position. His blue victory boat first out of the pontoon. Corella and Stark trying to keep up with Al Hamali. Dani Al Kamzi also has a great start as he leaves his teammate and namesake Rashid Al Kamzi in his wake. Look at Al Hamali, he leads the field coming around the commitment buoy, but the inside lane advantage helps Corella and Stark hold on to their starting 1-2 positions, although Marcelek struggles to keep up. Also a great start from the other victory driver, Sean Torrente, who's already up four places as he passes number 51, Mike Shimura. Corella leads the race, but Ahmed Al Hamali is pushing in second position, nudging ahead of Eric Stark, while Philip Schiap is buried away in sixth position. Ahmed Al Hamali does it. He seals second spot, bumping Eric Stark down to third. Then Stark's teammate Jonas Anderson is in fourth. Bartek Marshalek struggles to maintain his position as Daniel comes. He zooms past the Polish driver, taking fifth position and bumping. <laughs> down to sixth. 
Jonas Anderson in fourth position. Daniel Kamsi consolidates his fifth position behind the Swede. Way back with a lot of ground to cover is Philip Schiep and his CTIC F1 Shenzhen China teammate Peter Morin just behind him. Coming up the field is Sean Torrente, who next overhauls Grant Trask as the American moves up to 11th. No change in the top five. Corella leading, an ideal start to the race for him. Al Hamily in second, then Stark in third, followed by Anderson and Thaniel Kamzi. Bartek Marsalek has dropped three spots now in sixth, followed by Roms and Shiap back in eighth. Poor start for Moritz Stromoy, the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix runner-up, bumped down three spots and trailing Peter Morin. She tries to take Morin on the outside, but he's too fast and tight. He holds on to ninth. Corella opens a nearly four-second lead over Al Hamily, who in turn leads Stark by over four seconds, then Anderson in fourth, Fanny Alcamzi fifth, and Marshallek holding on to sixth. Philip Roms in seventh position, Shep struggling in eighth, his teammate Morin ninth, Stromoy tenth, then Torrente and Trask. There's a three-way battle unfolding as Grant Trask is chased by Duarte Benevente and then Rashid Alcamzi zips up on both of them on the outside. Coming around the yellow right-hander, Rashid Alcamzi almost collides with Grant Trask, but Trask fends the young Emirati off as the Aussie F1 Atlantic driver hangs in there. These carbon fiber boats are beautifully balanced and in the hands of a maestro like Corella, man and machine achieve a near perfect symbiosis as he's demonstrating out there today as if he's in a class of his own. Bartek Marshalek still in sixth, chased by Philip Roms, and there's Philip Schiap way back in eighth, his title hopes looking dimmer than ever. Now let's have another look at the start of the race. Excellent start from Ahmed Al-Hamli and Thani al Kamzi as well, off the pontoon on that starting straightaway to the commitment buoy. Corella calm and focused, knowing he has a straight line to the commitment buoy, and that enables him to tame that incredible speed from Al-Hamli. Now back to the race, lap nine, Corella maintains his lead over Al-Hamli in second. Ahmed Al-Hamli is a former race winner here in Sharjah, and he knows this circuit well. He's not letting Corella run away with the lead or open it up any further. Tough luck for Sean Torrente, his race is over on lap 11. He's been in the top three in the World Championship every year, but this has been a rough season. Uh, engine, 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 engine. Story of the year, start again next year. Meanwhile, it's a good race for Team Sweden with Stark in third, Anderson in fourth, and their third boat with Eric Eden still in it at the back. Although Eric Stark has no title hopes left, he's on course for finishing the year for a first ever year-end podium. Alex Carrilla is cool, calm and collected in the lead as he looks to be spot on for a 15th career Grand Prix title and a fourth world championship. Shiap must know that it's all down to miracles now, but ever the professional, he races with the same intensity he started with. Mad Croc Baba Racing Team's Philip Roms is putting in a solid run in seventh position ahead of Philip Shiap. Roms keeping finish and Mad Croc Baba hopes alive in Sammy Celio's absence. Roms catches some air going around that turn and Shiap moves up right on the young Finnish driver's tail, but Roms holds it together, gets it back under control. As the race enters the halfway mark with 22 of 45 laps raced, Philip Shiap keeps the pressure on Philip Roms, who's doing an amazing job holding off the three-time world champion, the young Finn slicing through the back markers, chasing Bartek Marshalek. Eric Eden suddenly loses control, veers to the right, disoriented. The Team Sweden driver reigns in the boat and gets back on the circuit, but it's a dangerous re-entry, the Swede narrowly avoiding collision with Al Hamili. More bad news for Team Sweden, a breakdown for Eric Stark on lap 30. He was going so strong in third, but he looks to have still sealed a year-end podium despite not finishing the race. Uh, uh, one propeller blade ago, like the propeller broke again, so... Really shit this season, we broke so many propellers, so I don't know, I don't know. Really, really, really tough. It's a race. But consolation for Team Sweden, who are second in the world team standings. <laughs> Oh. 
as Jonas Anderson fights on in third with Eric Eden also still in the race. Meanwhile, Ahmed al Hamali in second feels the pressure from Jonas Anderson. The victory driver precarious down that straightaway, dancing around on the water before steadying his Baba boats. But Jonas Anderson continues to push the Emirati, coming up on the outside, looking for a way around him. They are side by side on the straightaway. Incredible speed from Jonas Anderson in this drag race for second position. And Jonas Anderson does it. Anderson is in second position. Al Hamali bumped down to third. The five-time Grand Prix winner from Sweden is on track for his best result in what has been a disappointing 2017 after finishing world number four last year. Al Hamali's slide continues as he's then overtaken by former teammate and fellow Emirati Tani Al Kamzi on lap 38. Al Kamzi surging up from the back to third position in this race, adding yet more points to the Team Abu Dhabi tally as Al Hamali struggles to keep up the pace, dropping to fourth. Al Hamali loses pace and continues to fall back, overhauled this time by Philip Schiap in the number one boat. And sure enough, Al Hamali's race is over. Pity for him, out so near the end after holding on to second position for so long. With Philip Roms also retiring from the race, Shep suddenly finding himself inching his way up the ranks. Finally, a faint glimmer of hope on the horizon, perhaps for the Frenchman, but there are only five laps left, and Corella doesn't appear to be having any issues with his boat. Nevertheless, Shep continues to drive like he's in it to win it, chasing down boat after boat, knowing that's all he can do and hope for the best as he gives chase to Tani al Kamzi in third position. But there would be no miracles for Shiap. This was all about Alex Carella from start to finish. He won all three sessions in BRM qualifying. He won pole position and he led and won the race start to finish here in Sharjah. He has had the perfect Grand Prix. He is the world champion for 2017. What a year it's been for Team Abu Dhabi. A clean sweep in 2017. Corella is the world champion, the BRM pole position champion, and the fast lap champion. And Team Abu Dhabi reclaimed the world team championship. There it is, Anderson, runner up behind Corella. Tani Al Kamzi comes in third. What a race for him too. She up fourth. Marshalek ends up fifth, great result for the pole, best ever result for Peter Marin in sixth. Then Grant Trask, Moritz Stromoy, Rashid al Kamzi, and Duarte Benavente completing the top 10. Eric Eden finishes 11th in his maiden race. The World Team Championships, Team Abu Dhabi head and shoulders above the competition in 2017, and what a result for Team Sweden, one of the lesser teams in terms of funding and finances, but they finished the year runners-up, beating the likes of CTICF1 Shenzhen China, Victory, Matt Kroc Baba, and Emirates Racing Team. The world champion for 2017, Alex Carella, one of few drivers to win four world titles. Shiop's dreams of four world titles in a row is broken, finishing runner-up, while Eric Stark finishes third. Great result for him on the year-end podium. Tani al Kamzi, world number four. Jonas Anderson ends the year fifth. Those two runner-up results in the first two rounds is all the points Celio got for the year, finishing seventh, while Torrente ended the year eighth ahead of Stromoy and Marshalek. You know, really amazing. We were, you know, we were, we were close to, to be able to fight for the, for the gold, but you know, you know, in this class, you know, it, competing to these big names at Karela and Chap, you know, it's quite amazing. Yeah, it's not uh, what we worked uh, this year, but uh, Abu Dhabi team uh, is very strong and Ahmed make a very good season. No discussion, it's the best this year and uh, we have too many problems uh, in Avion Arbin and also in Sharjah for winning the championship. And second is good, good for my team. And now we do works for next year. Always a perfect feeling. I mean, uh, until then you never, you never. Oh. 
feeling to, to be world champion, but after what happened is uh, the best feeling ever. I mean, uh, with the life we with the life we do. Sharja topped off the weekend and said farewell to the year with a lavish traditional gala dinner where drivers, teams and their families got to experience the splendors of an Arabian feast under the stars. That brings to a close the 2017 UIM F1H2O World Powerboat Championship. See you in 2018.